Good morning. This is the fourth time I'm speaking here. And for me, it feels like a tradition every year to come and share part of our progress, part of our story. This event for me is a little bit more special than other events that I speak at, simply because it was the first event, a big event of this kind that I ever gave a keynote. And today, it's a more special day for us because we want to tell you something that we have never told anybody. So it's kind of an emotional day. The same way that you meet a girl that you love and you get to see and date that person once a year and then after a couple of years, this is the time that you propose. So I'm proposing to you guys. And before I tell you what I want and what we need, I'm going to tell you a story. This is my story. This is something that I never shared with anybody since I started the company like six, seven years ago. And the reason I didn't share it was because I thought it's a, such a big idea and I don't have enough to show for it. I don't have enough credibility to talk big. But as time passed, as we got lucky, we ended up working with the greatest people in the world. We feel and I felt it's a time to tell the story because I want you guys to know why we do what we do. This guy, his name is Carl Ghost. Some of you might know him. I think his picture is in the back of all the German notes. He's a big mathematician of 18th century. It's a guy that I really like because I used to be, when I was 16, 17 years old, be a big nerd, a lot into mathematics. And I always was fascinated with all the theories and problems he solved, the way he solved it. And when I was 16 years old, one afternoon, I was reading one of his book, one of his theories. And then suddenly there was this footnote in the book about his biography. And the biography was, oh, Karl was born in Germany, this 18th century something, and then died like 60 years after, which is a good age for like two, 200 years ago. But I started crying because in my mind, I felt what would have happened if he would have lived another five years, another 10 years, another maybe 50 years. What he could have added to the world if he would have lived longer to be able to contribute to the society and solve the problems that he solved even more, even better. And it's very interesting coincidence because the day that I decided to share and present actually why I do what I do to my own team, which was about a month and a half ago. We scheduled it like 10 days before the date, uh, mid-March. And the same day, uh, we had a Stephen Hawking's uh, pathing and leaving us. And for me, it became even double emotional because if he would have lived another 10, 20 years, what else he could have done for us. And we get very sad when greatest minds in the world, they pass away and they stop contributing to the world that we live in. Let me tell you a little bit about the story of Metapath, where we started, what kind of things we've been doing. As you know, we work with now some of you guys here, probably more or less you know what we do, but I'll give you a little bit of background. We are all about connecting 
complex chronic disease patients to their care provider so that they can be always optimized for the treatment so that the clinical team can have knowledge of what's happening with their situation when they are not in the hospital, which is most of the time. And we started with a couple of diseases and more and more we started working with bigger partners, better partners. And we got very lucky to have a selection of the best academics, the best technology companies around the world to work with us, to help us to cover a lot of conditions, to be able to be in a position to support a lot of patients across different disease indications. And as a result of that, slowly we started building solutions around cancer, cardiology, good number of rare diseases, and we are adding more and more. And again, most of the credit goes to our partners, the people that they believed in us, whether it's Apple or Tencent, or whether it's NHS or Johns Hopkins, or whether it's like biggest pharmaceuticals in the world. And they enabled us together support patients and be in an to have an opportunity to support patients across different disease indications. And as a result of this journey, we started learning more and more. And as you know, people don't die because of their disease. You don't die because you have a heart condition. You don't die because you have diabetes. You don't die because you have Parkinson. People die because of complication of their diseases. People massively deteriorated their health because of complication of their diseases. And complications are predictable. If you have data, real-time data from people through sensors, through getting patients engaged with simple technologies, it doesn't need to be complicated. It could be something as simple as this. You can start becoming proactive. And what we learned, it was it's a very interesting observation. When we are young, we are more like this pen. As soon as something goes wrong, you leave it, and it comes back to stable positions. You become healthy quickly. So you, something breaks, you come back. You get a disease, you become stable, with a little bit of intervention, maybe. As we get older, we become more like this pen. As soon as something goes wrong, doesn't matter what disease indications, if you don't do anything about it, or if you don't react quickly, it goes wrong even more and more, and suddenly you get expired. But if you know this pen is becoming unstable from each direction, from each part, each organ, you can start becoming proactive and put it back into the stable position. And diseases are connected to each other. Heart diseases cause neurological diseases. Neurological diseases cause sometimes potentially cancer and others. So each time you put the body back to the stable positions, you optimize it. You are automatically delaying a range of complications that can happen. And each time you do that, you're adding one year, two years, five years, ten years to the life expectancy of the person. But also, you're massively improving the quality of life of that person. If someone has heart attack, which is a complication of heart condition, that person's life will change for the rest of his life. And what we are talking here is not impossible. We as a society, we as a human being, 
we have done that. If you look at Iron Age, long time ago, very long time ago, we used to live 25 years roughly in average. Yes, we had lots of child dying early, contributing big time. But look at 1965, pretty much somebody that we know has lived in that time period. Average was 45 years. And we have almost doubled it. And with the use of technology and being proactive about it, we can double it again and again. And it's not only about your health. It's not only about living longer. If you can address diseases, cure diseases, be proactive about diseases, we directly contribute to the economy. Diseases are one of the main causes of poverty. If you look at 1965, that's the era that we have lots of infectious diseases happening and influencing the economy of the whole world. And by stopping that and by extending people's life, living longer, everyone, every great mind could contribute more to the society, could do greater things. And that's a good thing. And now we are living in an era that chronic diseases are kind of like infectious diseases that we had 50 years ago. We think we have a shot to make this happen, to play a big role in this space. We think it's going to be really hard. And we know it, it's going to take a long time. And we also know it, we wouldn't be able to do it alone, by ourselves. It might take five years, ten years, maybe even more. And we don't actually know what is the right path to get there. The only things we know is maybe the first step. And for us, this is the first step. If you have seen me talking in this conference for the past three, four times, every time I asked, I begged you guys, support and believe any digital health companies that you see. Because we got to where we are simply for believe of one, two, three, very few people to start with. And slowly we built up on top of that foundation. Today I will ask something a little bit different, maybe a little bit selfish. For us to be able to achieve the goal we want to achieve, to extend people's life expectancy, by a meaningful amount. We need to learn more. We need to be part of as many as people's life, patients' life, supporting as many as conditions as we can. And we put this crazy target for ourselves. Even sometimes I cannot sleep myself because we put this target simply because we felt this is what we need to achieve so that we can make this dream a reality. And the target is 1,000 projects in about two years' time from now. And this is the number of the projects we have had as a company since we started 2011. Very few, and then slowly 20 and 50 and 2018, aiming 200 something. And we've been very lucky. Greatest people and greatest companies in the world, from the biggest pharmaceuticals to almost majority of London teaching hospitals and globally in the UK, Germany, China, US. People believe in us and started working and collaborating with us. 
And to achieve that also, we need a lot of smart people, dedicated people to our cause joining us. And that's why we also set another goal, which is, I don't know if any company has done it, from the size that we have to hire 500 people to join our company. So we are massively ramping up the size of the company and the number of people we are hiring. And it's all because we really think wouldn't be a better word if the greatest minds like Stephen Hawkins, Carl Gose, Steve Jobs, Marie Curie could have lived another five years, another 10 years, maybe another 50 years. Wouldn't be a better word if we could have lived longer with our loved ones, with our lovers, kids, parents, grandparents. And this is a dream. And for no, we have no intention of claiming that we are even close to make this dream a reality yet. But it's a dream that we think it's worthwhile. It's a dream that every morning I woke up past seven years, I thought about it and I never told anybody. And this is the first time we are telling it, sharing it publicly. And I decided to do this here because this conference is special to me and to us. And my only selfish, maybe, ask is, please, join us, work with us, support us in any way you think fit so we can achieve what we want to achieve. And we think we can make a better world together. Thank you.